Hi, everybody. Uh, we're up to, uh, as I promised, we're going to get we're on section 1.4. And as I promised, we're going to uh, get into the topic of the infinitude of the prime numbers, meaning uh, showing that the number of primes is infinite. So uh, let's get right down to it. We're going to prove this theorem. We're going to do what they call proof by contradiction. We're going to assume that it is not true. We're going to assume that the number of primes is not infinite. In other words, it's finite. And we're going to show that this leads to a contradiction. So if the number of primes is not infinite, then it has to be a greatest prime number. If you have a finite list of, of numbers, one of them has to be the greatest, you know, if, it's, uh, if we're talking about positive integers here. So uh, we shall denote that by P. So P is going to be our greatest uh, positive uh, integer prime, our greatest prime number. We want to construct a number n, capital N, which is 1 times 2 times 3 times dot, 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 times p. So this is basically, by the way, you can call this p factorial if you want, if you want to fancy, plus 1. And then we're going we're gonna to take this whole product and add 1 on top of it. Now, n has to have some prime divisor. Okay. But every... Every non-unit divisor of n is obviously greater than p. Now, why is that obviously greater than p? Well, here's the thing. 2 can't go into n because n is equal to a multiple of 2 plus 1. Three, so, it has, so if I would divide this by 2, I'd get a remainder of 1. Um, and... Three doesn't, if I divide this, if I take n and divide it by three, well, this is a multiple of three plus one. So if I divide it by three, I get a remainder of one. If I divide it by four, I get a remainder of one. If I divide it by five, I get a remainder of one. Any number less than p, if I divide it, I'm going to get a remainder of one. So no number, so p and no number, certainly no prime number, but I, no number period less than p is going to go into capital N. So the prime divisor has to be, q has to be, greater than e e either n itself is a prime which is greater than p or or its prime divisor has to be greater than p um so that is the contradiction hence uh it's hence there is no greatest prime and thus is the proof of the theorem uh that of the infinitude of primes and there's a famous theorem there are actually other ways to prove that that primes are infinite uh, i may I may do some of them in this class anyway um Anyway, um, similarly, if we look at the uh, arithmetic regression, five, eleven, seventeen, twenty-three, this arithmetic regression has to have it has an infinite uh, number of primes in it. I mean, not only are there infinite number of primes in general that we just proved a second ago, but there are infinite number of primes in this progression. Now, now 5, 11, 17, 23, these are all happen to be all prime numbers. But what we what we what this is here, these are numbers of the form 6n minus 1. That's 6 times 1 minus 1, 6 times 2 minus 1, 6 times 3. No, so so for example, uh, well, 29, well, it goes up for a while. Um, well, 35, 35 is not prime, but um, but there will be infinite number of primes. And it's kind of a similar um, proof uh, because if the number of primes is finite, there has to be a greatest, we'll call that P. If I look at the number N is equal to one, two, three, dot, 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 times P minus one. So it's P factorial minus one. So this is not divisible by any of the numbers less than or equal to P. And clearly this number is of the form four N, six N minus one. Because two times three is six, so it's of the form six n minus one, and there has to be at least one factor of that form. Because if all the factors were of the form six k plus one, and I multiply them all together, I would get my final number would be of the form six k plus one. But since my final number is of the form six k minus one, there must be some number of six k minus one, which is a prime, which is not on the original list. And hence, by the similar contradiction, 
um, uh, we have infinite number of primes of the form 6n minus 1. So not only can I say there's infinite number of primes in general, I can say there's infinite number of primes of that particular form. In fact, uh, there's actually a, a, a big theorem, which we're not going to prove. It's uh, beyond the scope of this course, which is that if I have any arithmetic progression, a, a plus d, a plus 2d, a plus 3d, dot, 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 um, as long as a and b are relatively prime, there will be infinite number of prime numbers in this. Um, now, if a and b are not relatively prime, a and d, I should say, I'm sorry, that should be a d, a and uh, d are relatively prime. So if a and d are not relatively prime, so I just want to note that that's a little typo there, that b should be a d. Um, let's see if I can fix that now somehow. Hold on. So as long as a and d are relatively prime, then this will have infinite primes. Now, again, this is something, a general theorem, which is not going to prove it's beyond the scope of this course, but it's a, uh, it's uh, good to know. Uh, we gave a little proof for uh, four n numbers of the form six n uh, minus one, which means, and uh, which means, uh, which means d, which, which means a would be would have been five and d would be six. But anyway, uh, let's look at let's look at this exercise. Prove that there are an infinite number of primes of the form four n minus one. So we're going to prove this in a similar manner. Uh, and let's just go through the proof. So, so here's the proof. Assume that there's only a finite number of primes of the form four n minus one, and let p be the largest such prime on the list. So we're going to construct this number n, which is one times two times three times four dot 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 all the way times p, and then minus one. So we're subtracting one. Now, n is is of the form four n minus one because I know there's a two there, there's a four there. Obviously, uh, you know, this p factorial is a multiple of four. And um, and uh, so, and I'm subtracting one, so n is of the form four and minus one, fine. Well, n is relatively prime to p and all the numbers less than p, just like we said before, because it's, it's one less than a multiple of p, one less than a multiple of p minus one, one less than a multiple of any number on this list. So particularly n is relatively prime to all the primes, all the all the known primes of the form 4n minus 1, which as far as we know is all the primes of that form. Well, we know that n has to have a, some, at least one prime factor. M has to have a prime factorization. We, we know that m has prime factors. We, we established that in fact already. And n must contain at least one prime factor of the form 4n minus 1. Because if all the prime factors were of the far form 4n plus 1, then n itself would be of the form 4. Because if I take a bunch of 4n plus 1 numbers and multiply them together, the, the result is going to be uh, 4n plus 1. Actually, I'll show you why that is in the, at the end of this. Um, that's my contradiction. Because we now have some a number, a prime number, 4n minus 1, which is a prime, but it's not on the original list. Hence, my original list was never finite, and we done. But I want to explain this step here. What do I, what, is it, what do I mean when I say uh, if I if if everything was in the form four n minus one, then the number itself would be of that form. So let's just take a look what I mean by that. Let's um, let's go here. Suppose uh, suppose I would have uh, well, let's just you know. I'm just going to take a four a plus one and 4b plus 1 and multiply these guys together so I get 16 uh, ab uh, where we plus um, 4a plus 4b plus uh, 1 I, if I multiply this all out and that is equal to um, Four times four AB plus A plus B plus one. So we see that 
if I take numbers of the form 4a plus 1 and 4b plus 1, multiply them together, I get 4, whatever this is, this, this four, 4 times this blob plus 1. So if I take all numbers of the form 4n plus 1 and multiply them together, I'm just going to get another 4n plus 1 number. So, so therefore, that's how I know that in order to get a four in, in order to get to that minus one over here, there has to be at least at least one of the numbers on this list has to be four n minus one. And that, my friend, is the story, and that is the proof. So yay, and that is one point four. So we're gonna we're gonna end the the fun and excitement here. That it's been loads of fun for all of us and. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.